And welcome back once again to the Tri-State Ford pregame show. You know, it's easy to take things for granted, especially here in America. Food, shelter, safety, and a decent education are easy to find here, but not so in places like Sierra Leone, where Mohammed Kamara was born. He's an immigrant who came to America fleeing a war-torn and impoverished nation, and through grit, determination, and perseverance, he's accomplished at just 18 years old more than many who are twice his age. Now, if you know of any teenagers having problems applying themselves in school or work, uh, perhaps he can provide inspiration by listening to his story. But please be aware that some of the images that you're about to see portraying the ravages of war may be too intense for younger and more sensitive viewers. Hope Week Day 3 ended in typical fashion as Muhammad Kamara threw out the first pitch of Wednesday's game. But what's truly remarkable is how Muhammad's story began. In Sierra Leone, amidst a bloody civil war infamous for its use of child soldiers, maimed civilians and refugees, all for the control of blood diamonds and power. I was born into the war, I survived the war, I struggled during the war. It was a terrible war. A lot of people was killed, including some of my family members. People's hands was cut off. You know, I witnessed everything. This is the life that Muhammad knew growing up. And at the tender age of nine years old, Muhammad's childhood ended. I was forced to be a man. My father was in there at the time. He left to go to another village, hoping to find food for us to eat. My mom was sick. There's no one to search for food. So, I left my family behind to search for food at nine years old. And I went from villages to villages to search for food because there's no food, there's nothing to eat, my family was starving to death. So I have to do what I gotta do as a, as a child at the time to help my family. Three days later, I came back to, to reunite my family. There was no way to be found. And I was left alone at nine years old to look after myself you know, to get food for myself. It was hard, but I keep looking and looking. It's been like two, three weeks, four weeks, like almost a month after I found my family till I met a couple of people who they think they might have an idea where they may be. Eventually, Muhammad found his sick mother and missing siblings. As the man of the family, they looked at young Muhammad as their only hope. The war lasted for 11 years. So the war finished 2001, that's what war ended. And that's when I have them, a great opportunity. That opportunity was in fact a chance for certain refugees to move to America, the land of opportunity. Muhammad and two sisters would live with their aunt and uncle in the Bronx, but it came at a great sacrifice since most of his siblings, his father and ill mother would have to stay behind in Sierra Leone. Leaving my family behind, was one of the most difficult things in my life because I knew, I knew this was a chance for me to go to America and start something new, not only for me, but also for them to help them, you know, help them out financially and physically. So I had to take this, this chance and do the best I can. Well, when I first arrived, the first thing I said was, wow, you know, it's such a beautiful country and I always heard about, you know, the making dream, such a great opportunity. So I was blown out by, you know, by the, the warm welcome of the people in the street. And I was really excited. I was excited, you know, to start a new life. Speaking no English, with little knowledge of the culture, Muhammad struggled to adapt. But through perseverance, he began to excel and was eventually recognized by his teachers, including one who would be a mentor starting in high school. I was always impressed by how hardworking he was and as a student. And then I started to get to know him a little bit and I was really impressed with how poised he was. You know, over time I suggested maybe I knew his situation a little bit. He was very private at first and didn't share too much information with me, but you know, I knew his living condition here in the Bronx and uh, so I suggested maybe that I could get him a job as a caddy and he said, that he would love it. I set my alarm clock at four in the morning. So 4.30, I leave the house. So by the time I get up, go to work, I should be in Jersey by seven o'clock, start work at eight o'clock. I have to do it to provide for my family because they all depend on me. So as a ninth grader through senior year in high school, he's just been a worker. 
and uh, you know, it's made a lot of money. Every two, three weeks, send about $300, which is a lot of money back home. So I was able to send to help them to go to school, for food, for clothing, and other stuff that they were able to get, and it will help them a long way. Muhammad's story reflects the spirit of Hope Week as he generously helps others persevere and excel. And so the entire Yankees organization set up an unforgettable day for this diamond in the rough. A day full of surprises began at the New York Stock Exchange. Muhammad. Come on, wait. <laughs> Brian Cashman with the New York Yankees, my friend. This is CeCe Muhammad, Sabathia. This is nice Reggie Jackson. Guys. Muhammad, you are all about <laughs> helping others. Today is going to be your day where you're going to hang out with us on this is Hope Week and we're going to make this day about you because you make every day about everybody else. Is that cool? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Muhammad's next surprise was the opportunity of a lifetime. Your, your story and your accomplishments um, and the remarkable role model that you've been so far in your life you know, has, has you know, really touched everybody here. So we're hoping that you would consider coming to co coming to work for us next summer and to do an internship here with us. So you have that opportunity if you'd like. Next on the agenda, Muhammad went to City Hall to meet Let's some more famous faces. What's up, man? You doing all right? Yeah, I'm doing good. Nice to meet you, man. Including the top New Yorker. So this is who you need to know in case you get in trouble. Right. No. Don't get He's not getting <laughs> Then it's a trip uptown to the United Nations, where Muhammad receives a special invitation to meet with Sierra Leone's ambassador. Even on a day that Muhammad describes as the happiest in his life, he cannot escape from the wounds of his childhood. While speaking with the ambassador, Muhammad remembers the tragedies that he witnessed and one that he was not there to see. Last year, his mother, sick for some time, passed away. You know, she passed away last year, April 8th, 2009. It's very expen expensive to go back home. So I know if I had a chance, I'm saving up money, maybe enough money to go, not only to go see where to put my mother to rest, but also to have the, ch the opportunity to help others that needed help. Muhammad Kamara's journey from Sierra Leone to Yankee Stadium was remarkable. His struggles are certainly not over, but Wednesday's events seem like the start of a new life for someone who's worked so hard for so many years at such a young age. Muhammad Kamara wants everyone to know that his story shouldn't make people feel sad for him. In fact, it should be a catalyst for change. I want people to, to know that if I can survive a civil war, be able to give back to the kids in Africa, no, at such a young age, I want them to know that if I can do it, they can do it as well. They can help kids in Sierra Leone, help kids in other countries in Africa that need help, that need to go to school, provide them with food. If I can do it at such a young age, no, I think they should be able to do it as well. Well, Mohammed Kamara, yet another inspiring story of Hope Week, and we wish him the best of luck as he moves forward.